46 Sherman. My comments were approved by my attorney. The city mailed legal notice stating that we have the right to speak about Kendall. Your mayor's claim that taxpayers are forced to accept your ethics entity's advisory opinion fails in logic and law. An advisory opinion binds no one, especially when it fails to address taxpayers' concerns. I submit that no matter what public officials may want, taxpayers can decide for themselves what to reject as a sham. We oppose this council's vote at Kendall to sentence over two dozen trees to death for no reason and to endanger pedestrians with an alley that dumps traffic onto the narrowest street. The Evanston Patch reported that your first ward member assured the developer's lawyer that your vote would be pushed through no matter what taxpayers say. You voted with no discussion. You attack us for stating the negative impact of your vote. At your April 10th meeting, your first ward member said she had more closed door meetings with the developer. When you use city resources, taxpayers have the right to speak. The trees at Kendall are among our oldest living neighbors. Scientific authorities state that trees are oxygen factories that combat greenhouse gases and that mature trees enhance property values. The city code 617.6 requires tree protection. You claim to be a Tree City USA green initiatives, but I submit that there is nothing green about needlessly killing so many trees in just one block. The developer's lawyer stated that Holland and Knight was hired to sue the city even though the same firm represented and was still being paid by the city. The rules of professional conduct forbid such double representation against a current or former client. Your first ward member's son works for the same firm, but your first ward member pushes the plan. The U.S. Supreme Court condemned such a conflict of interest in Nevada Commission on Ethics versus Kerrigan. Your ethics entity cannot pardon violations of state or federal law, nor can it overturn the U.S. Supreme Court. I submit that your insistence on silencing taxpayers creates the appearance of a cover-up of serious wrongdoing. At your April 30th meeting, I asserted my right to opt out of your electricity aggregation scheme and make my own contract decision, as suggested by the Evanston Sentinel. You attacked me and refused to legally record my decision. I submit that your refusal to let me opt out is slamming an invasion of privacy in violation of federal law regarding consumer privacy and unfair trade practices. Agenda item SP6 involves a so-called amendment to increase the city budget. When you fail to accurately present the entire city budget at public workshops months ago, then I submit that taxpayers cannot trust you to take over the township's duties as a safety net for our neediest neighbors. Protect the trees and pedestrians of Kendall as the city code demands. Stop attacking taxpayers for rejecting when your votes and actions adversely affect them. See you all next time. My comments were approved by my attorney. The Kendall resubdivision involves killing many mature trees. This is unacceptable in a tree city USA. It is also unacceptable because of traffic hazards caused by a bad alley configuration. As legally affected neighbors, we have the right to bring our grievances to this council. Addressing taxpayers' concerns should be important to this council. Yet, the Evanston Patch reported that your first ward member assured the developer's lawyer that your vote would be pushed through no matter what citizens comment. Instead of addressing the taxpayers' concerns, your mayor, mayor tried to suppress us by interfering with our comments several times. Your 8th and 7th ward members tried to divert attention from the issues with their own sideshow attacks against us. Finally, your mayor turned the microphone off on us on April 23rd and last week. Any respect for this council evaporated with when you chose such a course of conduct against taxpayers' right to speak. If you want taxpayers to respect you, then you must respect the taxpayers and their concerns whether you agree or not. That is your duty as public officials. Protect the peace at Kendall. That is the only way 
you can live up to your claims as a free city USA. I lend my voice to defend the voiceless trees and I will not be silenced. I will be back. I'm Douglas R. Cannon. I'm their attorney. And yes, I do read and approve their remarks. And I carefully, with them, check the evidence that supports their comments. Their theories are their own. The factual evidence, however, is clearly established before they make any comment to you. I have been told that the Ethics Committee has removed from jurisdiction this Council's consideration of ethical violations, if any, I'm not making any specific allegation, that might be a part of the Kendall and Holland and Knight situation. I've gone through the ethics report, and while the ethics ordinance incorporates certain state statutes, there is no mention of those statutes, much less the legal interpretations thereof found at each statute. I call to your attention 50 ILCS 105 slash 3, prohibited interests in contracts. Again, none of you can have an interest even through another party. And that is supported by an opinion from the Attorney General that goes to the appearance the mere appearance of conflict. That Attorney General's opinion is 1993 OP, OP General 93-010. Number two, interests in contracts. 65 ILCS 53.1-55-10. It is almost the identical wording of 50.105-3. Directly in the officer's name or indirectly in the name of any other person, association, trust, or corporation. Look it up, read it carefully. And then I would suggest you read the annotation there too. People versus Charlotte, a Un Illinois Supreme Court case that went to the United States Supreme Court and was upheld. That is an enlightening document. If you think this is not a serious matter, let me read to you what the penalty is for violation of these statutes. 50 ILCS 105 slash 4, penalty. Class 4 felony. And in addition thereto, any office or official position held by any person so convicted shall become vacant and shall be so declared as part of the judgment of the court. The state of Illinois is not fooling around with this issue. I would submit to you, if you don't like that, go to the United States Supreme Court, Nevada Commission on Ethics versus Kerrigan, a remarkably co uh, close assimilation of this case. Read it. It has been cited to you previously. I would suggest you study it. As for cutting off the microphone... Mr. Cannon, I need you to wrap up. You're I'm going to do that right now, Madam Mayor. I call to Madam Mayor's attention 65 ILCS. 5 slash 3.1 dash 55 dash 15. Misconduct of a municipal officer. Willful and corrupt oppression. Malconduct or malfeasance in the discharge of duties upon conviction shall be fined not less than $501 nor more than $1,000. The court entering the conviction shall enter an order removing the convicted officer from office. Madam Mayor, take heed. Lastly, disclosure Mr. of FOIA Penn, requests. You are way over your time. Disclosure of FOIA requests. I would suggest you look at Mr. Chicago Penn, Alliance for me. Neighborhood you Safety versus Chicago 348 Illinois app that absolutely forbids such disclosure. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes public comment. Next on the agenda.